Where is he? <sighs> oh. hey. hey, sir. Where have you been? I've been waiting for you. I thought we had plans. Oh, we do. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was, I was practicing. Practicing? Uh, yeah. How am I gonna go serve if I don't practice? How do you practice serving? Oh, serving's the easy part, but then you gotta go chase the ball down. That's the hard part. Okay, what are you talking about? Serving. That's the easy part. Uh -huh. And yeah, chase the ball down. That's the hard part. No, okay. I, yeah, I heard you the first time. What I meant to say was, how does you going to play tennis have anything to do with us going to the soup kitchen? You said we were serving today, right? Yeah, but that is not at all what I had in mind. What were you talking about? I was talking about going out and helping people, lending a hand, serving. You have little to no idea what I'm talking about, do you? No, I, I, yeah, you, that's this, we're talking about this definitely, same thing. I don't, serving. I don't think so, man. Playing tennis is way different than serving. You know what? I think maybe you need to talk to somebody about this. Oh. I need, okay. Yeah. Hey, ha, how about this? All right. Welcome, Mr. Know It All. Oh, hello, hello, hello. How are you doing Wait. today? How are you doing today? Who are you oh. and what do you know? Jake, I'm glad you asked. My name oh, my is Frederick Schneider. Hey, like, like cousin to Felix Schneider. And yes. where is Felix? Felix, Jake, I'm glad you asked. He is in Chile right now, the country of Chile, and he is doing a exotic extreme encouragement for the Zumba class. Of course he is. Wow. Nice. Well, Frederick, I hear you're an expert on serving. Jake, I'm glad you asked. You know, I have incredible experience in serving. Really? Nick mentioned that you needed some help understanding what serving is. So I am the serving expert. That's right. We do need help. Great. Let me start from the beginning. First, you need a little bit of background information. I was the ball boy at Wimbledon oh, for no. 10 years, and I only one time, one time got hit. That's a pretty good record. There's a lot of balls. I only got hit one time, all right? And let me tell you what serving is now. You take the racket, okay? And you take the racket, and you hit to the diagonally opposite serving box that you're in. All right, Jake, do you understand that? If you're in the right side, you hit it to the left side. If you're in the left side, you hit it to the right side. Do you understand what I'm saying, Jake? Do you get what serving is now? Exactly. Okay, yeah, you're right. It is, that, that is what serving is. But that is much, much, much different than what I had in mind when Nick and I signed up to serve today. Thanks, Frederick, but I don't think we're gonna be needing your help after all. Jake, I'm just glad you asked. I think we're gonna be needing to talk to Jonathan about this one, actually. What do you say, Nick? I don't know. Maybe. Sure. I guess. Sorry, Frederick. Nick, it's great seeing you. I'll see you all later. All right. Bye, Frederick. And with that, it's Bible story time with Jonathan. <laughs> Okay, well, let's talk about serving. Well, first we can talk about on saying what serving actually is. I mean, serving is helping people do things. It's helping people accomplish things. It's helping people to, to do all the things that they need to do. It's about being for people. It's about lending a helping hand. And the good news for us is that Jesus shows us exactly what it looks like for us to serve people. Like Jesus served people all of the time, like 24 seven, Jesus was serving people. He was helping people make sure they had food to eat and make sure they had a place to live and a place to stay and making sure they helped get all their chores done. Jesus just served people all the time. And there's actually one particular story in our Bibles today that I want to look at because it just, Jesus does, does an amazing job of serving people. But before we do that, before I say what the story is, I'm gonna let you know, I'm gonna need a little help today. So I'm gonna invite Nick to come and hang out with us. Here to serve. Hey Nick, how are you? 
I'm good, man. How are you? Great. Well, I'm, we're going to look at a story today, and the story happens in the book of John. And so John is writing this story. John was a really great friend to Jesus, and so John records this story, and this is how it goes. So Jesus tells his friends, his disciples, he's like, hey, I need you to go into Jerusalem, and when you get there, you're going to meet a man, and this man is going to be carrying a pitcher of water, kind of like this one, but probably not but maybe. And so he's going to be carrying around this pitcher of water. And Jesus said, when you find this guy, I want you to follow him because he's going to take you to a place where we can have a meal together. And so Jesus' disciples were like, sure, Jesus. And so they run into Jerusalem and sure enough, they find this guy carrying a pitcher of water like this one, but not really. And they follow this man all the way up to this this place in the Bible where called the upper room and Jesus and his disciples, they were going to have the last supper together, the last meal. And so Jesus, uh, his disciples, they get there and they're going to the room and they're getting everything set up for this meal. And so Jesus shows up and Jesus sees all of them and uh, they're getting ready to have this meal together to, to celebrate together. And, but then Jesus remembers that there's one thing that they had to do before they could sit down and eat. One must deal with the stinky feats before he takes the tasty treats. You see, that's right. You see, when Jesus was alive, people walked around barefoot all the time or they wore sandals. And so people's feet were like really, really nasty. And not only that, but they would eat at these really low tables on the ground and they would sit on cushions. And so people's feet were like right next to their food, like all the time. It was pretty gross. It's gross. It is gross. And so before they would eat, the disciples and most people when Jesus was alive, they would wash their feet. Now, normally this would be a servant of the house. He would show up and he would wash their feet. And so they wouldn't get like feet smell on their mashed potatoes or whatever. And so they would wash feet. Well, so Jesus is around and if you can hold that for a second, that'd be great. The disciples, they're arguing about who's going to wash their feet, like who's going to do it. And so maybe they were probably thinking, well, like the youngest person, the youngest person likes lollipops, I guess. So they were going to be like, hey, you're the youngest person. You can wash that person's feet. And so that wasn't a good idea. And then they decided, well, maybe the shortest person. That would be me. Yeah. yeah. The shortest person would wash someone's feet and then they decided that, that wasn't a good idea and so they fought and for a really long time and so finally Jesus decides you know what I am going to wash your feet so Jesus takes this cup of water pitcher can you go ahead and take your shoes off and hop in the bucket there chief sure man sure man so Jesus is gonna wash his disciples feet now this was a big deal because I mean Jesus was kind of important and he was gonna in that bucket right there yep yeah, so Jesus would walk over and he'd pour the water in the bucket. Is it warm? It's a little chilly. A little chilly. And then Jesus walked over his disciples and he got some Ajax Ultra. I'm sure he would do that right in the bucket. Oh. Nice and sudsy. Sudsy. Nice. And then Jesus would take out his cloth and he'd bend down and... Tickles a little bit, you know. <laughs> and so he would wash his disciples' feet, and it was a really big deal. And so Jesus got to his friend Peter. Does that feel good? Yeah. Feel clean? Yeah. I don't smell you anymore. Not anymore. Anymore. So Jesus got to his friend Peter, and he was going to tell, he's going to wash Peter's feet. And, and Peter was really confused. And this is what it says. This is in John chapter 13. And she said, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet. And Jesus looked at him and said, you do not realize what I'm going, what I'm doing, but later you will understand. And no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. You see, Peter was kind of embarrassed. Either he had really long toenails or stinky feet, or he just realized that what Jesus was doing was a really big deal. And he said, Jesus, no, I should be the one washing your feet. And so Jesus later said, I uh, said, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. And he says, do you understand what I have done for you? He asked. 
It's like, you call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. And then Jesus said, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, so you should also wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. So Jesus sets this really incredible example for us, and that's exactly what we're talking about this morning when it comes to serving, is that Jesus tells us that we should wash other people's feet, even people's feet like Nick. But And I know we don't wash a lot of people's feet today. I mean, we have showers and baths and oceans to swim in, but... I think Jesus is setting an example for us that we should serve people. And sometimes we have to serve people, even if it means doing something that we don't always like to do. And the reason that we do that is because Jesus set an example for us. You see, Jesus served us, even though he didn't really like the task. And I think if we're going to be a people that love Jesus, then we have to serve people the way that Jesus served us. Well, that's my story. Well, thanks for being here today, guys. Wow, I feel totally refreshed after that wonderful foot bath. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. That was a great story. Do you see what I mean now by what it means to serve others? Yeah, I think so. And I mean, it's pretty crazy to think that Jesus did what he did. I mean, he did for his friends what no one wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, sometimes serving looks like that. Sometimes it means doing something for someone else to help them, even if we don't feel like doing it. Hey, that reminds me. We should reveal the question. All right. Oh. Why should you serve others? Oh, wow. Okay, gross. But to answer the question, I guess it's because it's not really about you, right? It's about lending a hand to others. It's about treating someone the way you'd want to be treated. Right. And, I mean, you could do things like do your chores without being asked to help out your family, or you could go be nice to the kid who doesn't have as many friends as you. Right. We can all choose to serve because Jesus set the example for us. He gave his life for us. He taught us what it meant to serve. Well, why don't you guys go talk about why we should serve others, and I think me and Jake have some serving to do of our own. That's right. See you guys next week on the Sunday Funday Show. (laughs)